today I'm going to try a new recipe. In my freezer, at the back of my freezer, since autumn last year, I have had a bag of frozen slow berries that I picked back home at my parents. Um, and I picked them, freezing them apparently is really good for the taste of them. So I decided to pick a load of them. There weren't that many, so this, this is literally all I could get my hands on. And I've frozen them. And finally, I've decided to do something with them. And I was looking at different recipes. I mean, you can make slow gin, but that means I've got to buy a bottle of gin. And what's the big deal with that? Instead, I have found a recipe for slow berry curd, which is like lemon curd, but slow berries. And it, the only things it uses are things that are already in my kitchen. So it's not going to cost me anything extra. And it makes a little bit more space in the freezer. So this recipe is for 100 grams of slow berries. I've got 400 here and I just want the whole thing done. But what you can do with this curd, because although it says you have to eat it within two weeks once you've made it, you can also freeze it. So I pulled out some little, um, little jar things, little plastic things, and I'm gonna clean those up, get them sterilized and clean, and then I'm gonna freeze it. So I'm going to keep a bit out in the fridge to use and freeze the rest. So what I need to do, because I've got 400 grams rather than 100, and I'm not going to use them for anything else, so I might as well do the whole thing. That means I've got to quadruple all the ingredients. So what that means for me is that I've got 400 grams of slow berries. I will need four tablespoons of lemon juice, eight of water, 400 grams of sugar, which is such a lot, 200 grams of butter. I don't have butter. I always cheapskate it and go with baking margarine. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. And that's a lot of eggs but I've got a lot of eggs in the fridge at the moment, so it's gonna need eight eggs. That's eye-watering. This had better be good. If this goes wrong, I've wasted a lot of ingredients. I don't tend to find that ingredients go wrong with me. So I'm gonna follow the, it's quite a simple recipe. I've written it all down. So I'm just going to run through it and um, you can come along with me for the journey. Bit of fun, something a bit different. So the first thing I need to do is heat the berries, the water and the lemon juice. Simmer for five to ten minutes. Now, I don't think that saucepan is going to be big enough. Time to get out the big saucepan. I don't have a middle ground for this. So, then they go frozen as they are, as they come off the tree. You can see all the berries in there. There's good space in the freezer. So, water and lemon juice. of lemon juice to hand. I've had this one a while but it still seems to be working. I've been using it. So I need four of these. So I 
now need to simmer these carefully for five to ten minutes. You mustn't let them burn. So I'm going to put them on a low heat. And we'll keep an eye on them. And whilst they're doing, I'm going to prep the other ingredients. So I need to get my eight eggs. Six eggs. Eight eggs. That's scary. I've never used so many eggs as an ingredient in my life. They are definitely a commodity, eggs, but I have been stashing up lots of um, discount eggs for a while. I have far too many, so that's all right. Uh, right, so I'm gonna crack those. Need to get those. eggs. I need 200 grams of butter, or in my case the margarine. I need 400 of sugar. Gosh, that's a lot. So, that's all the ingredients sorted there.
that has pureed pretty well. It's nice and thick and I've been crushing the berries as they've been going round because I need to now strain them and get the seeds, the little stones in the middle and the skins out. So I'm going to do it with this because I've already given it a good squishing so to speak. I'm hoping that this won't be a difficult job and I don't mind doing this the long way round. So, bit at a time. I'm going to get a teaspoon of this. And you just squish it round. The juice will come out the bottom and everything else will be left in the top. There's the leftover, looks like waste, I hate throwing this away, but there's nothing I can do with the seeds and the remaining bits of flesh and what have you. So I am going to put this into my food recycling and I'm sure the bugs outside will be happy. So you end up with far less than you started obviously. And now we're going to bulk it up with all the other ingredients. So now I just need to check that no bits left here that should be in there. That looks good. Uh, right, so now this needs to go back into the saucepan. back in. So now I need to add the sugar and the butter in and then heat until dissolved. So sugar and the butter or my version of the butter. Now I've made lemon curd before and I used this cheap cooking margarine before and it was such a good recipe. I need to start making more um, lemon curd using this because this was great. So now I'm just going to stir this gently, blend it all together. It won't take very long. Slowly beat in the eggs. Bring you in close up for that one. Because it's so exciting. <laughs> Joking, of course. Now, this needs to be done on a low heat, so I moved it forward onto my smallest ring. Tastes heavenly. Mm. So, onto the smallest ring. And then you basically have to whisk it in 
and keep whisking until it's thick. Should take about two minutes, but we'll see about that. So I'm just going to do it gradually. There's a lot here, you know. <laughs> I'm beginning to regret making an entire vat of this stuff. Now, you know when it's thick enough, when it sticks to the back of a spoon. It reckons two minutes. And as I say, I've made um, lemon curd before and I had no problems with that, so this isn't really any different. What if they tell you how long it takes to thicken something like this? Or like when you're doing jam and you have to get it to that setting point. It always takes longer than what they tell you. This is starting to thicken. There's no way it's happening in two minutes. It's going to take as long as it takes. When I make jam it always takes significantly longer. Definitely starting to go, I can tell. God for that. <laughs> I was getting worried for a moment there. It's like you sit there for ages, stirring it and thinking nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden you start to notice it. It tastes so good. It tastes like a curd. Oh wow. It tastes so good. It's happening. It's thickening. I promise it's thickening. So it'll go from water to thick as toffee in about 10 seconds flat now. It might be because I have so much of it here that it's taking longer. This is four times the ingredients on the list. There. I've given up on that, it's hard work. It's thicker, but it's not thick. But I also think that once it's cooled and it's been in the freezer, that is probably going to help. So I'm kind of going to give up at this stage. <laughs> I've lost interest. Um, I'm going to use my little funnel here to fill up some of the jars. I've got another one here, which is a plastic one. And whatever's left over that doesn't fit into these ones will go in here and then it'll all just go in the freezer. is the one I'm going to keep out. And these 
other ones are going to be for the freezer. and crumbles and cakes and all sorts of things as an extra ingredient so that is probably what will end up happening with this because I suspect it's not going to be thick enough as an actual curd um, although what I now need to do is make some bread although I've got those crumpets in the freezer I might add it to crumpets tonight and see how we get on with that so I'm just going to let this cool that is a vast amount of curd but this is now also an extra baking ingredient so it's not just something to spread on crumpets and bread this will be fantastic in the winter crumbles that I do in the cakes that I do can you imagine a slow berry curd cake be like a marble cake that would be absolutely amazing so most of this as I say will go in the freezer that's now a winter stock and these things tend to freeze at a kind of a, a soft level so instead of like, I won't have to defrost the whole thing, I can just scoop out what I need. So these two are perfect, I would imagine, as individual amounts, like for a cake or something. And this I will work through in bits. I'm really pleased with that. It's not as thick as I want it, although it's definitely thickening as it sits. I'm gonna let all of that cool. And uh, that was really good tastes so good. I don't want to leave any of it behind. They have a whole winter supply there of cooking ingredient. Fine by me. And when you think that all the eggs were discount, so those eggs probably cost me about 60p for the whole lot. The sugar was free because I bought it on nectar points. Um, what else did I use? The lemon juice? I don't know. I bought that on discount last year sometime. And what else was in there? That's pretty much it. it? The slows were free because I picked them off the bush. So I don't know what you'd pay for that in a shop. A little tub like that would probably be like three quid. One of those fancy organic brands. Oh. That is just top. Now, just need to wash everything up and I'm done. Hope you enjoyed that. That's a really simple, cheap recipe. Uh, the information will have gone up on the screen so you can get the ingredients. Um, I will do it based on the 100 gram recipe and then you can weigh up your own slows or whatever you're going to do. And this is the same recipe or similar ish to the one that I use for lemon curd. So you could put whatever flavour in. I would imagine you could swap your. Um, your slow berries for strawberries or blackberries or whatever you wanted and you would end up with a similar thing so I hope you enjoyed that bit of an experiment I'm glad it worked because that was a lot of ingredients but um, fantastic uh, baking ingredient for the winter that will really help me face the winter with my winter desserts because that's a real thing for me so um, hope you enjoyed catch you later bye bye